Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through three, or the three, no, well, I guess three of the four official Dolmenwood adventure scenarios. I'm going to be going through the fungus that came to Blackswell, Imelda's Song, and the ruined Abbey of St. Clude. Now, these are not finished. Uh, two of these are in the 0.5 version, and the last one, the Ruined Abbey, is in the 0.4 version. They're mostly done. There are some art pieces missing, there's some editing that still needs to be finished, but this is a very good preview of what these are going to look like when they're finally done. I wanted to share it with you guys now because Dolman Wood, I think, is officially supposed to be released at the end of summer, and I don't know when they're going to update with the 1.0 versions of these books. So I, I thought I might as well go through them now because you can get a sense of what you know what's coming down the pipeline. and. I think Dolmenwood is still available for pre-order. So if you're interested in jumping on board and getting these adventures right when they come out, either in PDF or in print, you know, you can get them. Uh, or you will be able to get them fairly soon. These are awesome adventures. Really, really good. Uh, now, the Ruined Abbey of St. Cluid is something that we've actually seen in some form or another in the Wormskin zines. I've covered it before in when, when I went through those Wormskin zines a while back. But this one, it's very similar. It's got enough difference that it's a new product, really. And it... One of the things that, well, I'll talk about when I get to it, but the tone is decidedly more fairy tale Dolmenwood than it used to be. It used to be much more, I would say, kind of despairing body horror. Really, in a way, I saw it as pretty, not cynical is not the right word, but certainly tragic at best. That's not how the new Ruined Abbey is. It certainly has that element to body horror kind of craziness, and there's a certain element of um, cynicism with some of the characters. But it has shifted into a much more firmly, I would say, fairy tale adventure, which fits with, of course, the way Dolmenwood is going. I think it's different than the way Wormskin was. Wormskin was sort of a dark take, very much still in that fairy tale vibe, but it had dark, a dark take on a lot of that stuff. And, um, and I would say outside the realm of fairy tale. It, and, and I think the Ruined Abbey, as it is here, is, is back in the realm of fairy tale. It's still on the edge. It's still pretty dark and, and tragic and things, but it's still it's, it's within the realm of fairy tale now. That's not to say fairy tales can't be tragic. Very often they are. But there is a certain element of, uh, well, for a real fairy tale, right? Um, I think G.K. Chesterton said, right, that, that fairy tales are important not to tell you the dragons exist, but to tell you the dragons can be defeated, right? That's what makes fairy tales important. And I think that's a really, that's true, that fairy tales have to have an element, in my opinion, of hope on some level or, or something like that. Otherwise, they just kind of become dark and depressing. And I think that's what you get with this new Ruined Abbey. So anyway, I'll talk about it a little bit when we get to it. But first, let's go through the fungus that came to Blackswell. Great adventure. This is, first of all, it is a fantastic I mean, the, the maps are just so good. <laughs> I love the style here. I don't know if this is final in terms of the color, in terms of the, the illustration style, but I love it. And I love how it's listed, everything's labeled. It's not hyperlinked, I imagine it will be, but it's not hyperlinked, at least in this edition. But you can see the general view of the village. You can see the inside of some of the buildings and the dungeon beneath the fungal laboratory. It gives you a sense of what perhaps is probably going to be happening here, right? <laughs> um, so... There are st certainly still some things that need to be done. This is the 0.5 version, right? This doesn't have any proofreaders here. As you can see, that no one listed. There are some pieces of art that are missing. This is the one that I think is in the most TBD form. Um, but you still get a sense of what it is. Uh, and I, I think that's great. So about this adventure. The, the ill-fated village of Blackswell, deep in the woods, shortly after a fungal apocalypse has hit. So it's character levels two through four, so it's not right away. Um, one of the adventures that does come with this, um, that I got with this, but I've I had it before, was um, Winter's Daughter. Now, I'm not covering that today because I've covered it before. There's a few versions of that. I haven't done a comparison of the last version that I had with the one that's been released with this, um, this set. But I'm, I'm pretty sure it's very close. I would imagine that not much has changed. So I didn't feel the need to go for it again. But that's a first level adventure. This is for levels two through four, so slightly higher. I like how right away it tells you how much wealth there is to get in this adventure. Total of approximately 33,000 gold pieces worth of monetary treasure is present. Magic items and new fungi are also listed with their GP value. That's great, so you can get a sense if you're doing you know, gold for XP of how much you're going to have to, or how much you're going to give out and, and what level your players might be by the end. Um, if you're doing Shadow Dark, you're going to have to adjust that because of course gold, the treasure levels are different in Shadow Dark. But uh, if you're going to 
shift this to a different system. If you're using old school essentials, if you're using the Dolman Wood system, which is sort of a take, right, on, on the old school essential system as it's coming out, which I think is really cool. I'm very excited to try it. If you're using Dragon Slayer or, you know, any other old school game, uh, Labyrinth Lord, BNX, d and anything that you can, um, you know, very easily transfer these stat blocks over, you might have to do a little transition. But 33,000 gold pieces, it's a lot, but not too, too much. Some cool adventure locations as well, as we'll see. So what we get here is a good referee's background, get the information about the place, what's going on. There's this fungal thing, a wood god, <laughs> beneath the city, beneath the village, I should say. And this wizard came to study it and realized or thought he could he could make himself immortal. Wizards always want to do that, right? By invoking these, you know, eldritch magics and linking it to himself. And of course he did, but now this mushroom thing has infested him and taken him over and now it's just it's just he's a thrall of it or just kind of an extension of it and it wants to keep growing and so it just decided to grow through the village and so the spores took root blossom tons of fungal creatures come out and most of the villagers are dead um and now there's this horrible place and the church has found out about it and a certain group within the church is like we got to destroy this place we got to burn it to the ground burn it all with holy fire right <laughs> you have two or three days before the troops arrive to solve the problem but it says you know the referee can adjust this timeline as desired so that's kind of cool. You have a timeline built in right there. You have some hooks into it. One is that, you know, there's this researcher who was there. The, his people reached out to hire you. Another one, of course, is that another agent of the church is like, hey, we want to save them. We don't want to burn them. Uh, and this is something I noted in the original um, Dolmenwood review when I did it back in December was that uh, very often we see kind of like, you know, in a lot of these adventures that, you know, the, the, the lawful organization, the church, whatever it is, is almost always bad. It's almost always tyrannical, right? And and I understand why people do that, right? They tend towards that. Um, but it's not always, you know, we've seen that so much. It's nice to see a little bit of like, no, sometimes the people in authority aren't just evil, right? Sometimes there are good people who are trying to help. And that's what we have here too. This this one element of the church is like, hey, no, actually we want to save these people. And so you can work with him to try to help them. That's another hook that you could do. You know, you, you know, if you if you prefer just that militant, like, you know, inquisitorial burning all the witches sort of thing, right? Then you can just leave that out and just have it be the, the one the one faction. But I think it's cool that there's those two that are working kind of maybe you know, alongside each other, but also against each other within the church. And then you get plunder, of course, as a good, <laughs> right, a good hook. That This is a hook best suited for neutral or chaotic parties. Plunder the village while, uh, while you can. Yeah, makes sense. This obviously will be a piece of art here. On the right page, it's not in yet. And that's what I said about this one. That's missing a lot of the art from the book. Um, you get some general notes about the place. Hag iron, there was that, so it kind of made the village... You know, valuable. There was this mine beneath the village, and you, they, they got this rare metal called Hag Iron. Some good random events here. Some good pieces of art. I really like this. Gets you a sense of what the village is like. Father Ingram Birdle, infested villagers, the lycanthropic dead. <laughs> That's great. Mycelopod, the fish market, stonemason, the roper, blacksmith, the Wainwright. Aster's fine costumery, which is great. Sylvain Aster. And, and most of these people are, most people in the city village are dead, but some of them are just infested. And so what you have is people who are still kind of okay. They're still kind of okay. They're still basically able to function. So this guy's one of them, Sylvain Aster, still able to function. He's not going to be super helpful. Um, what does he want? To maintain the impression of normalcy despite the circumstances, which is great. It's going to be a funny NPC to interact with. Um, Klepp's workshop. Klepp's, uh, Johannes Klepp was one of the guys who was, was looking for what was going on. He was an investigator from the society. And so you have uh, his laboratory. You can go through it. Fish, the Fish Fop Brewery. <laughs> That's great. Fish Fop's Ale. Um, the Barber Surgeon Butcher. Crooked Arm in a whole bunch of places. It's a great little town with a whole bunch of places to explore, to loot, especially I think for a neutral or chaotic party to just go through a kind of post-apocalyptic of ruined village and just loot it. That could be pretty fun. Um, the Infested Villagers, the Fungal Father's Family. <laughs> uh, that's great. 
holding hands in a circle atop a flattened mound of rubble, chanting rhythmically unlike any known language. Fungal fibrils, transparent yellow, emerge from heads connected to the fungal father. Fibrils ascend to the rafters. What is the fungal father? A 20-foot-wide anemone-like mass of yellow-green fungal blob. The thick, bulging veins that crisscross moist, fleshy exterior is nestled in the rafters, occupying most of the space under the roof. It's a web of yellow fibril bundles connected to the father, uh, the father to the villagers. To, it wants to collect followers through which to observe the world. It accepts adulation as a form of positive my, myconeural feedback. <laughs> Little dogs, puggles. They're playing amidst the mushrooms. The Church of Saint Gondu, Gondov. I actually don't know how to say that. Gondov. The parsonage, the graveyard. Basically, what you get here is a whole village, statted out laid out so you can find what you need to find, hunt through it, and then you can go down below it into the mines. This is a great little location adventure. It's, it's contained. The, the stuff isn't going too, too far beyond it. So the village itself is, you could take this and drop this into any world. You don't have to run this in Dolmenwood, right? You could run this in any game. And you get the epilogue, right? What happens if church troops arrive? What happens if Paranax is destroyed? What happens if he survives? Um, or it survives? Yeah, it, I guess. New spells, you get the Blast Spore, Mycotic Mind, and Spore Clouds. Great back cover. So this is uh, the fungus that came to Blackswell. I think it's an awesome adventure. Really good adventure. I love things like this. Again, this is basically plug and play because, yes, it's connected to the overall Dolmenwood world, but not in a very, very complex way. You can plug this into your world or not. And that's great if you're planning on using a Dolmenwood, running a Dolmenwood campaign. If you don't want to use this, if you don't want this whole vibe, then you can just leave this out. It's easy enough to do. Um, you have enough in the village that you could easily transform it into a regular village if the players wanted to, if you wanted to do that. Um, so, fungus that came to Black Skull. Great adventure. Even though it's not totally complete yet, I think you can see what it's going to be like, and I, I, I'm really, really keen on it. Uh, Melda's Song is the second one, and this one is much more complete. Even though it's still in the 0.5 version, most of the art, I think all of the art is here, maybe one piece is missing. But this one is a very different kind of adventure. This is going to be dealing with, um, well, it's like a cult, basically. Uh, an evil goat man noble who's kidnapping people and, and who has this. It's, it's actually a really interesting adventure. Um, he's got this... Uh, this one particular person who has to sing. She has a beautiful voice, and singing is required for his ritual, and so he has her enchanted to sing. So that's why it's called a Melda song. Great, cool. I love the maps here. Again, these aren't hyperlinked. I imagine they might be in the final one. I don't know that, but I, I just it would make sense that they would be. A map of the grounds of Shade Home Lodge, and then the dungeon beneath, the lower crypts, the upper crypts. It's a great dungeon. It's pretty straightforward. It's not really, really all that long, right? But you can certainly look around. It's not you know, linked up. You can basically go anywhere right away. That's cool. I like that. Might be better to have it looped a little, but, you know, not, not a huge deal for a dungeon this size. I think it's missing a, a piece of art right there underneath the, uh, on the front page. I don't know that, but I, I think it might be. In this adventure, so an abducted local, Amelda, is imprisoned here. Her wondrous song, the key ingredient in an eldritch conspiracy that threatens the high world and possibly Dolmenwood itself. This is also from levels two through four, so this is not a starting adventure for Dolmenwood. You, you know, a level or two higher. So you do Winter's Daughter first as a level one to three adventure, and then you know either either the fungus that came to Blackswell or Amelda's song could serve as a follow-up adventure. Maybe you do both, right? Um, you have four adventures from um, Winter's Daughter all the way through to the Ruined Abbey. They could take you through Dolmenwood in lots of different places, and it would it would certainly play as a great campaign, just those four adventures back to back. So, what's going on here? Well, Lord Griffius Malbleet, which is a great name, right, has this occult obsession, and he wants to bring back, or he wants to defeat his, uh, his half-brother, his rival, and he wants to unlock the power of his ancestor, Lord Gruff. But, unfortunately, Lord Gruff isn't just gone. You wake him up, bring him back, it's not going to be so good. It's not going to be so easy. We've got what's going on here. There is a festival on the, on the grounds where you have games. Uh, feasting, drinking, dancing, devil goat races, and other revels are held. All citizens of the High World are welcome. So there's going to be a festival here. And uh, at the festival climax, his plan is to shock the world with a miraculous and revived Gruff, proclaiming Malbeat as his true heir and rightful ruler of all Bregel kind. Of course, it's not going to work out that way, but you have this sort of festival happening outside, and then down below you have these things going on. That's a great setting. The greatest setting for an adventure, because you're going to be outside doing all this stuff, and then maybe going down, trying to find your way into the house, then trying to find your way down through the house into the, the stuff below. 
I think that's really cool. Player's background, common knowledge. I like this, right? Give the players the common knowledge they know right away, then maybe give them some local rumors where they can stuff they can find out in Langshorn. Use Langshorn settlement and these notes as PCs explore. So you're going to be in Langshorn, stuff's going to be happening, and you know this is the sort of stuff you would change about Langshorn as written in the main book in order to make this adventure be happening there. You don't have to do it, right? You could just read Langshorn as written and ignore this adventure if you don't want to. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't want to run in Dolmenwood, this is fine. You can put this in anywhere you want. Right? This is a, it's this one's a little bit more connected to the lore of the world, the idea that there are certain kinds of creatures and certain kinds of magic and certain kinds of things. So you'd have to do a bit more work, I think, to adapt this to your own setting. But it's a great one. It's a great adventure as you go through. I think it's a really good option. As you go down, there's some hooks, right? The distraught ant. So Amelda's ant and guardian Evangeline looks for some help, and she has a, a fairy magic rope that she will give to anybody who finds her her niece. Uh, there's the spy master. So something's happening. Um, Klopnot wants intrepid intruders to infiltrate the shade home during Hlerebuck and investigate strange goings on at the tomb complex. And then you have the drone. There's a possibility, right? The drone want to thwart this thing, but they also want the book that's at the center of the ritual. Do you really want to help the Druun get more dark magic? Well, maybe. If you know if the players know what the Druun are, who they are, then maybe they'll be suspicious about this. But the idea that there is a dark ritual going on, that might be enough for them to work with them, at least at, at, least at the start. Um, the Druun are kind of one of those background villains, right? You're not going to probably fight them right away, but are you really going to have your interests be totally aligned with theirs? Probably not. Bregles, and a brief description of what they are. Shade home grounds, you get the festival fields and what's going on there. The, the different activities that you can go through. I wish there were some games given, like if the players wanted to participate in them. I think that'd be kind of fun to have some rules for that. You could probably come up with them on your own, though. Wouldn't be too hard. The Watch House, uh, the Langshorn Tunnel Mouth, the Memorial Gardens, and the Memorial Chapel. And then, of course, the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The Altar that releases down below to Area 13 of the dungeon. Um, I think that's great. The Groundsman's Cottage, the Lodge itself, and then some general notes about the Lodge and guests there, and socializing and optional guests if you want to. That's great. There's a whole bunch below, and then you have a whole bunch of random ones you can roll up. That's awesome. Very, very fun to have those uh, you know, if the players, maybe the, maybe you could even, you know, they're invited to the lodge. Maybe that's where they get to stay, and so they have a few days there where they're socializing and figuring things out. That'd be great if you have a certain kind of group or a certain kind of adventure design, or a certain kind of, yeah, adventure tone that you prefer. There's the entry foyer. Uh, cloakroom, the salon, the dining hall, the kitchen. You get a brief description of that. And then you get the stuff below, the crypts. Desecrating tombs. <laughs> what happens if you desecrate all the tombs? Um... If you choose to open up all the crypts and steal from them, then everybody, including Malbleed's enemies, will go for you. They're not going to be happy about it if this becomes known. It's a deeply held taboo. No one in the high world would, would agree with you doing that. I think that's cool. So, risk reward there. And I love that piece of art, can I just say. Such a cool villain. Well, oh, man, you got to show this picture to your players. If this happens, if he comes back, you got to show that picture to your players. The jail... Uh, some of the imprisoned people. You get some sprites that have been captured uh, and kind of gross. They've been, they're being eaten. <laughs> um, alchemist laboratory, the wooden rack. Uh, you get the botanical lab, the wine cellar, the worm hall, which is pretty cool. The crypt entrance, the regular crypt entrance. Uh, or down below, I should say, the crypt uh, entrance to down below. Um, uh, or, or no, this comes up from the... That's right, it comes up from the top and then it goes down. Room 22 is, is, is the crypts down. You get devil goats there, the lower crypts, and this is where bad stuff is really starting to happen. This is where the rituals are going on. The Book of Foul wonders. It's worth 15,000 gold pieces in and of itself. Uh, very valuable, but it's a very evil book. Lord Narlgruff, and if what, hap I mean, what happens if he rises? What happens if you, he rises and he's killed? Um, what happens if Malbleet escapes? What happens if Malbleet's crimes are revealed? That's great. The epilogue. I like adventures with epilogue. It's very useful. This is a really cool adventure. Hopefully you guys uh, agree. I think Amelda's Song is not my favorite of the three. I like The Ruined Abbey a lot now. I didn't like it so much in the warm skin version, but I really like it now. I really like this one, too. Fungus That Came to Blackswell is a great adventure, but I think this you know, this might be my favorite. I just love the tone of it. I like the idea of going 
you know, you're having this festival and then down below something more nefarious is happening. It's a great um, classic trope. I love it. Third adventure, as I said, is the Ruined Abbey of St. Clude. This is a great adventure, especially, I think, with the way that it's been changed. I, I If you guys are familiar with the original, basically, um, St. Clude was this great saint who decided he was going to fight this really evil uh, unicorn, <laughs> or, or a, a sort of a unicorn. He was going to fight a very evil, you know, fey creature, basically. And he was losing, kind of wasn't succeeding, and so he offered this prayer to basically separate himself and it from the world and fight it for eternity, right? So he and it just, like, got transported to this other dimension where they're fighting it forever. So, you know, it's a great act of self-sacrifice. Well, in his place, his followers develop this abbey, and they're praying and all this stuff, and then um, they, they pray to return him. And they find this ritual to bring him back, but they do, it doesn't work out, and he sort of, like, melded with the thing he was fighting, and so there's this horrible monstrosity that is just this source of chaos and disaster and nightmares and stuff down below. And the monks have sealed it in and have vowed that they won't ever stop, and they've kept this vow to perpetually watch over it and keep it sealed off from the outside world. Also very tragic and kind of heroic, but also dark and, you know... Um, you know, it's it's a great adventure tone. It's great. It doesn't seem to me to fit a fairy tale. And as written, essentially, you get down here, everyone's just pretty miserable. You can go in there and kill the thing, and that's about it. That's the end. You just kill it, and, and that's the end of the adventure in the original Wormskin, Wormskin zine. It's like there's no, there's no kind of, like, hopeful resolution here. <laughs> that's very different. That's very different here. In fact, the sort of assumption now is it's going to have a hopeful resolution. It doesn't have to, but it's the sort of the assumption. There are a few possible epilogues, but one of the ones I think that the players are probably going to eventually do is the setting things right. And that's cool. That's really cool. So it's a bigger dungeon. You can see it's got this really interesting uh, upper level, and then you've got the lower level. Lots of stuff going on down here. Lots of faction play. Lots of NPC encounters. It's really interesting in that regard. I like that. This is also version 4, and there's a few pages uh, with art that are missing, but also has some more than uh, fungus that came to Blackswell. You have the, the referee's background, uh, Soloberg, the spawn of Atanaway. This is the thing, the Atacorn, cruel unicorn-like offspring of Atanaway. So this was an Atacorn, and um, it uh, was very evil. And so St. Clude fought it, killed it, sort of, didn't kill it, desperately prayed to the one true god, and he and the creature were, were struck with a bolt of lightning, and they were, you know, their, their essences were hurled into this dimension to fight forever. Well things, as I said, went pretty bad. They started to try to bring him back, and now there's this weird hybrid that's come back through a twisted, deranged amalgam of Clued and Salaberg. And the art for it is really horrific. I like it, but it's really horrific. Hooks. Reasons to come here. Relics, visions of the prophet, lost crown. What's really happening? All that. Player's background. Things that everyone would know. And then church knowledge. So if you get hired by the church, or if you're a cleric or a friar, you would know additional things. You get descriptions of the surface ruins. There's lots of ghosts up here. Um... There's depictions, there's things to run into, and uh, there's a couple spells. There's actually a really interesting spell here. There's appeasement. And in Dolmenwood, the way the clerics learn new spells is that they have to um, go to shrines and pray and do the thing, and then they get the spell. And so you can get the spell appeasement if you do that here. That's really cool. I love that sort of way of getting magic. There's a creepy shrike, I think. Is that what it is? I don't know what this one thing is. It's a Mr. Rag and Bone. Um, horrible undead thing who is uh, just... Um, yeah, this is cool. it's, it's really terrifying. <laughs> it's just hanging out in the tower. So that could be a reason to go fight it. Not necessarily, but you definitely could. And it charms children. That's really, really creepy. Um, I think that's just super creepy. But it's great. Really, really great. Um, so Lady Harrowmore has her daughter missing. Uh, that would be a reason to come search here. And you could certainly encounter this place first. And then, over time, maybe you realize something's going on down below and you come back or something like that. So you could come to the surface and deal with those children and deal with this horrible creature. But then maybe there's something down below it. That would be kind of interesting, too. Um, I like that a lot. Now, the, the thing that you get as a result of this whole adventure is the resurrection spell. That's what St. Clude's miracle is. So all the saints of Dolmen would have a different spell, a different miracle that's associated with them. And they're all, you know, this spells from old school essentials or variations on them, right? And it's really cool. I like how that works. But St. Clude's is resurrection. That could be another reason to come seek this place out. Maybe you really need to resurrect someone or you need that to happen. This is art that I think is from 
the Wormskin zine. I think there's a couple pieces in here where the art comes from the Wormskin zine, and this is one of them. I like this one. It's really interesting. <laughs> you get the crypt stairs down, ghost crows, the organ. Now you get the cloister, overgrown garth, the warming room, the monument, the herb gardens, and there's the ghost of their shade who's out there tending to plants. The graveyard, and there's a charm child hanging out there, maybe. Um, and then there's the uh, West Lodge with some gargoyles and the Mother Locket. It's a great middle magic item. Reveals an image of the viewer's mother in her current state, including if deceased. Communion. The viewer may converse with their mother for up to uh, once a day for 1d6 minutes. The magic functions even if she is deceased and in another plane of reality. That's really cool. Give that to some character you need to find their mother. I mean, that's a huge quest line that you could do on its own. Someone has asked you to seek this thing out. Totally works. The Abbot's Residence. There's basically a whole dungeon up here. There's Red Slob, which is a large ooze. <laughs> That's great. Um, so there's, again, there's a whole dungeon up top that you could be going through, exploring reasons to come there, reasons to do. It's a 29-room dungeon, so plenty of stuff to encounter. Obviously a missing piece of art here. And then you get the crypts down below with an entirely new thing happening with pervasive magic, chaos magic, warp stuff going on. You've got Undead Abbot. <laughs> You've got Undead Monks. Um, you get the Chaos Rift itself, the Undercroft of Chattering Skulls, the Mercy of St. Elsa, which is a, whole, a silver holy mace engraved with pr prayers. The Wielder Weeps Tears of Holy Water, uh, minus one penalty to attack rolls, but the extra d4 damage to undead. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The Prior's Tomb, a whole bunch of different Priors here. The Cistern, the Catfish's Vision, there's a psychic catfish down here, <laughs> which is awesome. A giant telepathic catfish. Passage of the Dead, the Seven Sisters, and uh, got the Seven Sisters, which is a, a Hydra. That's really cool. Desires the flesh of sentience. Obsessed with consuming Abbot Tasty Pasty, who leads those frocked fools. And then the description of each of the si sisters and the head. <laughs> Arabelle, or Arabella, Wide, uh, Hagsack, <laughs> Politude, Myrmidor, Simi, and She Who Dams. Cow with an upside down head. Eesh, creepy, but great. Treasure vault and a whole bunch of stuff in that treasure vault. So this is a very, very in, a powerful incentive to come down here. Then you get the western crypts, which is where all the monks are. The different things happening here. There's the Cardinites and the Loyalists. There are factions. There's you know, some who want to hang out. There's some who want to leave. There's a crisis of faith happening. Uh, there's you know, uh, what happens if you attack them all? What happens if you side with this group over that group? Who's going to betray who? Awesome. You get the Loyalist leader, the Loyalist lieutenant, the Cardinite leader. So there's several NPCs that are named and important here. Passage of the Penitent, the Gallery, the Inner Sanctum, the Inner Chapel with the Epitome of Life, a solid gold jewel encrusted casket. Inside rests a bolt of pristine white linen. It formed if it formed miraculously from dozens of scraps torn by mourners from their own garments following includes death. A dedicated follower of St. Clue who pray, prays over the epitome for one hour causes all nearby vessels to fill with wine, all nearby baskets to fill with bread, and all nearby lamps to fill with oil once per day. 25,000 gold piece value. It's, it's, it's an un... It, I mean, it's, it's literally uh, value, uh, you know, invaluable. There's, there's no infinite food, uh, wine, and oil. That is incredible. Very, very powerful magic item there. And a lot of the stuff in here is like that. Um, Hand of St. Cygnus, right? It, wielding it. It has the power once per day to turn undead as a level 10 cleric. Anybody just has that. The Sage Skin. The Knapsack of St. Dugan. Really cool. The Vestorium. The Chamber of Records with what's going on here. And this is this is St. Clude, right? It's a horrible, hideous piece of art of St. Clude. <laughs> and or the thing that he has become, right? The Charge, as it's called here. Um, now, here's what I mean. If you kill it, if you look at what happens, it says... Slaying. The spirit of St. Clude rises from the body, implores PCs to close the rift, cast it back in, then finally fades into the afterlife. So, right there you have the difference. <laughs> that St. Clude, if you kill this thing, it's not just like, oh man, that was depressing. St. Clude's like, no, set it right, and then he goes to the afterlife. So he passes on, he's at peace, right? That's just not how it was in the first book, at least as far as I can tell. And then you get the epilogue, what happens, right? If the charge is released, if it gets out, then it has this whole thing that's going to be bad, and you're going to have to probably you know, hunt it down and kill it. If you close the Chaos Rift, then all the monks collapse in dust. Um, all the monsters, except the giant catfish, discorporate. The abbey becomes a normal place, and the church uh, can reward you. They can. It, they said it, it, it's just a major event in the history of Dolmen, but it massively changes things. And then if you maybe don't kill it, you free the wardens. They go out to the rest of the world. 
Um, and then, you know, the Abbey will attempt to be retaken. But the full victory is only only possible with the rift closed. This is great. So it's a much more, I don't, I don't know, hopeful is not the right word, but maybe it is hopeful. The simple fact that that Clued isn't just like, you know, doomed forever to face this thing and then become this horrible amalgam and then just die there. I don't know, that was just such a depressed, it was such a downer, right? This great hero is actually just nothing. And uh, that's not fairy tale to me. This is much more like, okay, we can set it right. We can help him, we can defeat it, we can close the rift and set things right. That's cool. I like that. And I know you could kill the creature and you could, you know, disrupt the abbey and you, are, you can do all that in the original, but it just had a tone that was much darker. That the simple fact that it mentions, hey, St. Clude gets to pass on. That one, I think that one difference really changes the tone of the whole adventure. And it's interesting how little things like that can really affect the whole. Anyway, the Ruined Abbey of St. Clude I really, really like, and I can't wait for the final version with all the extra art. I think this is pretty much done, as you can see, but, you know, uh, I think a little bit more work will be put into it before it's finished. So, we have the Ruined Abbey of St. Clude, we have Imelda's song, and we have the fungus that came to Blackswell. I'll put links below to where you can pre-order Dolmenwood if you haven't already. I, I highly recommend it. These adventures are just, you know, again, three of the offerings from the whole set, but the core books are just fantastic. I can't wait for the final update. I'll probably do a, a, another review of the Dolmenwood, oh, Dolmenwood core books. Maybe in print, because I have them all um, supposed to be coming in print, uh, but maybe just I'll do the PDFs when they're finally all done. All right, guys. Well, that's it from me. I hope this has been interesting, and I'll see you in another video.